A wonderful good morning here from the Prime XPT Trading Academy studio. My name is Dirk Hartig and I have the honor of being your host today and also the honor of being the head of trading education here at PrimeXPT.com. In today's show, what else could we talk about than Bitcoin? Up, up and away. Seems like Bitcoin knows absolutely no boundaries. The bulls are back in the driver's seat. And we want to look at uh, how that whole thing develops, where Bitcoin could be heading and how the media and analysts out there are writing about Bitcoin. So we want to try to open the hood today and look a little bit at the machinery that is driving this current bull run to find out if it's something that's fundamental, fundamentally um, backed or if it's just maybe a bull trap. Who knows by the end of the day. As always, Little risk disclaimer, guys, this webinar is brought to you and provided by the PrimeXPT.com research team. We are professionals here, but this is no financial advice. Our mission is to, uh, to, uh, to offer you education from professional traders, from institutional traders, so you can build your own strategy, uh, trading strategy and you can make more well-informed trading decisions. But you are, of course, the one that is responsible for your positioning on the market. All right. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, as you see, I'm, I'm a little bit lost for words here today, really, uh, about what happening and what happened since uh, we talked last Thursday. Uh, if you remember last Thursday, I had a little bit. Uh, I, I actually, I said two things. I said I wouldn't be surprised if we see uh, an oscillating market around the area of uh, between 36,000 and 42,000. But well, it turns out I couldn't have been more wrong. Bitcoin really is on the bull run. I kind of jokingly said, hey, look, we have an outside bar here again. Uh, kind of the same uh, type of outside bar uh, that we, we had uh, down here when the bull run, the current bull run broke out to the, uh, to the north there. Uh, so if you are trading candlestick patterns, really uh, the last two and a half, three weeks uh, should have been very, very profitable for you. But it shows again the power of those situations where you have the volatility squeezes. And uh, I don't know if you're watching this regularly, you probably are already sick uh, of me talking about this. But again, uh, remember back when we said uh, we have a situation where a volatility squeeze is coming either to the downside or upside. Well, it went to the upside all the way here, but uh, and it was indicated by the Bollinger Bands. And I think you can really, really see now how powerful those squeeze moves really can be. Uh, it's really a bit uh, crazy what is uh, happening there. And if you work there with stop buy or stop sell orders, if it breaks to, to the lower side, stop buy orders, obviously, if it breaks to the upper side, you are uh, in, in pretty good shape for catching a large portion of moves like this. Ah, coffee, the most important thing in the world in the morning, in my opinion. All right. Um, so before we talk about uh, what is next in line for Bitcoin probably? Uh, let's have a look at how the sentiment is. Let's have a look at uh, the news also. I think especially one news out there uh, regarding the compromise on the infrastructure bill in the USA is especially important to discuss because it can have really long-term, long-lasting effects on the let's say, a uh, crypto swear that is placed currently in the USA. Uh, first, my beloved fear and greed index for Bitcoin, for cryptocurrencies at 65. This one is almost 24 hours old already, I think. It's from yesterday morning. So the new one actually should have come out now. Let's have a look. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Is it? It's not. Oh, here it is, the newest one. So 71 uh, has been rising. I think at 75, we come into the zone of extreme greed there. Uh, already always remember, uh, if we are in the zone of greed here, the market is more 
more has more momentum playing the upside. It doesn't mean that we cannot have days where we go down, but it means usually it reacts more to the upside. And I, I think this is especially what we saw yesterday. Uh, a lot of people were playing yesterday uh, the, the game of rejecting here this uh, this 200 days moving average at around about 45,000. We, we had a day before that, uh, that was Sunday, where we sneaked over it already, uh, but we closed below it. Yesterday, we really broke it. So you had a lot of uh, stop loss for short positions, probably triggered that drove the mark uh, even higher up. And today is all about defending uh, this zone here of 45,000. Uh, why is that so important? Uh, because, uh, and I am not getting tired of mentioning this, uh, if you follow us on on Twitter also, if you don't, uh, you should do so. Uh, here is our handle on Twitter, xpx at uh, px underscore academy. Uh, because you have a lot of institutional interest uh, that is coming in. And if there is really institutional uh, interest out there and coming and entering uh, cryptocurrencies and especially Bitcoin, uh, I'll show you some figures there later on from the latest report of Glassnode. And, uh, you know, I've talked already uh, about institutional interest when I mentioned last week uh, the fact that JP Morgan is building up a cryptocurrency fund, a Bitcoin fund for their private wealth clients. So for extremely um, um, for so high net worth clients, I think they would call it probably so clients uh, that have like north of, of a couple of millions of US dollars uh, in, in assets under management. And so there is demand. This is a typical example for institutional demand, really. And coming back to the fear and greed index. So what you'll see in times of greed is, uh, and, and in, in times especially of extreme greed, which I think will start once we this number reaches 75, which could be already the case if we see another update today, and is that the market will react more to the upside. So uh, typical, you'll have those higher, larger green candles than you have red candles, which pretty much is the case, I mean, especially yesterday we saw that, right? So uh, that means for my daily intraday trading activity, I at the moment would prefer to trade long positions and I would be cautious trading short positions because you are with short positions at the moment going against the the sentiment of the market, the will of the market. And I don't feel comfortable uh, really always playing the contrarian uh, trader that, that tries to, uh, to catch tops or bottoms. Uh, so if you have a trading strategy, and I highly recommend if you're new to trading to start with a trend following strategy, uh, look at the sentiment. If the sentiment is uh, in, in the green area for, for Bitcoin, try to only take long positions if it's in the red area like we had uh, like still three weeks ago when we started this show try to only play short positions but uh, this is only one indicator of course of what you could do uh, you also always have to be aware of the zones of support and resistance so this area here at forty-five thousand. Uh, or in fact, the, it's, it's not the number 45,000, it's because the 200 days moving average, uh, simple moving average, I should say, is there at the moment now acts as a support. So um, should we go down there? This, for example, could be a good long position there, uh, trying to catch that uh, in the hopes that Bitcoin defends this. Uh, but make sure then to place a stop loss, uh, not too far under it. Not exactly under it also because, as you can see, um, market a market always has momentum, so it will pierce it and then go back and not stop probably right uh, there. But that would be a midterm trade uh, that could you probably could play a couple of days uh, that you could do at the moment if you don't want to day trade. If you want to day trade, really see... Uh, in my opinion, at the moment, I see we have a little bit of a squeeze situation here at the moment. We're breaking from this very short-term uh, short -term micro downtrend. We we played from this top here at it's 46,700 or 46,500. We just broke it to the upside again. It looks like a volatility squeeze. I wouldn't be surprised if we attack these zones again uh, today. Um, so... Yeah, preferably long trade. So if you are trading the Bollinger Bands, for example, uh, you should pretty much at the moment ignore if 
if they touch the upside like they just did here and only try to for example play if they touch the lower side and i mean you see today this would have worked out very well but don't base your whole trading strategy please on just bollinger bands uh, just giving you ideas here what you could incorporate let's have a look at the news and i think there's something especially important um the senate just or not just this this news is actually from yesterday uh, the, the news yesterday evening, European time, uh, um, the Senate in the USA rejected the compromise crypto tax amendment to the infrastructure bill. So um, I, I mentioned this already last week a bit, uh, that there was something coming up. Uh, so the amendment of this one trillion infrastructure US bill, and there uh, was something in there regarding cryptocurrency tax. So the the bill, as it was, defined any uh, defined somebody as a broker, any person as a broker that is regularly providing any service, effectuating transfer of digital to assets on behalf of another person. And uh, the critics uh, of this uh, said this like definition is too broad because written like this, it could potentially target miners. Uh, so uh, people that run Bitcoin mining farms, for example. And you know, we had a lot of miners from China just moving to the USA uh, and setting up their, their mining rigs there uh, after China banned once again cryptocurrency mining but i think this time they pulled through more with it probably and um, it could also uh, target developers so if you are a developer you're running a node for example that verifies transactions uh, you could be targeted by uh, uh, by by taxation stakers so staking obviously a very big thing at the moment especially if you are if you have uh, if Ethereum, if you are hotling Ethereum, maybe you are staking Ethereum uh, or other De DeFi coins out there. So the problem is all those groups nece not necessarily have the information they need to comply to the IRS. And so this, this brings them in a very difficult situation because they are required to fill out a form. I think it's, what, what is the form called? It doesn't really matter. Uh, 1099 or something like this and uh, so they are required to fill potentially required because the definition of a broker is too broad uh, within this bill so they would potentially be required to fill out the form for the IRS with information they cannot provide so they, <laughs> they would be breaking the law because they don't have an information that is requested by the law and they cannot get this information so that puts you on a very very gray, dark gray area on very thin ice uh, in, in terms of in terms of security of law. And if you run, for example, a Bitcoin mining farm where you spend millions and millions of dollars to not only to set up this farm, so buying the Bitcoin miners, the, the ASIC miners, uh, renting, paying for electricity and so on and so forth, uh, you don't want to be in a situation where you don't know how the law is going to treat you. So what are you going to do? You're probably going to move away, or at least you are going to think about moving away your, uh, your operation outside the USA. And this is exactly what uh, some senators uh, that, uh, that were suggesting a compromise, an amendment uh, to this bill wanted. Uh, to clarify uh, who is a broker and to clarify that developers, that stakers, that uh, cryptocurrency miners are exempted uh, from delivering this information to the IRS to give them security and uh, to make sure that the knowledge of this potentially disrupting uh, technology, blockchain, cryptocurrencies and so on and so forth uh, stays in the US and doesn't wander off offshore. So uh, I, I yesterday when I read through comments, I, I saw somebody commenting uh, on this like, okay, because, uh, and sorry, I, I think I didn't mention this. So this compromise didn't make it and it didn't make it because of one senator that, uh, that, uh, 
be, be, the Senate did not vote unanimously because the, uh, Senator Richard Shelby objected. So it didn't make it. And he objected because he wanted, I think, something like an extra funding of 50 billion for, for the military. And he said, okay, if I don't get that, I'm not, I'm going to object. Uh, it's a bit like a little kid. Uh, either I get my will or I'm going to destroy the whole thing. A bit sad, especially if you take into consideration this guy is 84 years old and is not going to candidate again for Senate. Uh, for Senate. So there's a problem uh, at the moment there. And uh, yeah, there are fears uh, now that the knowledge uh, of developers, uh, of the very smart people that are in the crypto sphere that is going to wander off to other countries. Uh, so we should have a close eye on this. And I tell you one thing, uh, if we rewind a couple of, of weeks again into that area where we were still down here, yeah, and you remember the, the sentiment back then uh, was very, very bad. Uh, the, uh, we were in an area of extreme fear, of extreme pessimism. So this news back then probably would have made us break to the downside. But as we are now in a, in a sentiment of greed already again, everybody out there is bullish again for Bitcoin. Seems like Bitcoin doesn't really care. Uh, much about us. We still see the market rising. I mean, we're a bit lower today, to be fair, but it's not a large, and, uh, at least until now, not a large uh, red candle we are seeing there. All right. So uh, we will definitely have a close eye on how this will play out. And I, I cannot imagine that the USA really is so, pardon my English, stupid uh, to uh, to 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 uh, to risk that you have so much knowledge going offshore uh, that would be really really surprising uh, in my opinion it's a bit like like in the in the 90s uh, banning e-commerce uh, i mean imagine they would have done this uh, they would have missed the whole train uh, or the whole internet train there wouldn't be an amazon in this world at least not in the usa um on other news, uh, Bitcoin at 47,000 will confirm main push to astronomical levels. So a comment by Plan B, the founder of the Bitcoin stock to flow model. If you don't know what the Bitcoin stock to flow model is, I highly recommend you watch one of our older shows where I am talking about this exact model, what it means, what it does, and why it seemingly works quite well in projecting the price uh, of, of Bitcoin. So, uh, and it was founded, it was developed by a gentleman uh, called Plan B. He doesn't uh, work with his real name. He wants to stay anonymous. And he's saying two things uh, at the moment. First of all, he says Bitcoin will not go below 47,000 in August. Uh, that is by end of August, uh, he means there, of course. So uh, the, the end price of Bitcoin end of August, so in, in 21 days and three weeks, is not going to be lower than 47,000. And I mean, this is, this is very brave to, to make uh, predictions like this. And uh, he, he says also the current high, my, I'm going to quote him here, my on-chain data uh, tells me that this bull run is not over and 64,000 US dollars was not the top. This is in line with a stock to flow model. Also my flaw indicator not based on stock to flow says we will not go below 47,000 US dollars August close. Uh, very interesting. If you don't know what the bit, uh, what the stock to flow model is, or if you want to track it a bit more, I highly recommend uh, to follow Stock to Flow Multiple on Twitter, uh, who is charting the current price against the price uh, of valuation uh, of fair valuation according to stock uh, to the Stock to Flow model, and you see the deviation. We still have the uh, actual price. So that was this morning forty. 6,000 model price should be 100,000. By the way, there's another model out there uh, by Plan B. Uh, it's also based on stock to flow uh, with different, I, I think it takes in um, uh, real estate also, if I'm not mistaken, uh, but don't quote me on this, please, uh, that prophesies that Bitcoin should reach 288,000 this year. Would be something, wouldn't it? So you can follow this, uh, the deviation of this model by graph every day if you want, if you follow S2F multiple 
on Twitter. He always uh, shows this chart. And as you can see in the moment, we are still far, far away. So Bitcoin would have to more than double to reach this uh, black line at around about 100,000 at the moment. Also this morning, um, and, and I told you, I'm a big, big advocate uh, of people, of of the fact, for me at least, uh, well, it's of course a highly subjective, I say fact and, and say for me, of course, and um, that there is institutional demand out there. And I, I said last week already, JP Morgan Investment Bank, Bank setting up funds, cryptocurrency fund for the clients is institutional demand. Uh, because JP Morgan, the investment bank, is going to be the one buying out there. And uh, Glassnode just commented on this because they found out, uh, out so Glassnode is a, is a company that analyzes uh, the Bitcoin blockchain and tries to, from the blockchain, from the transactions that are recorded there, tries to, uh, uh, to project like what are the participants of a blockchain currently doing? For example, are they sending with a loss? How long do they on average hold their, uh, their, their coins? And so on and so forth. And they found out that between 2020 and 2021, the dominance of large transactions in Bitcoin has risen from 30% in 2020 to over 65% in 2021. And large, uh, large transactions here are defined as transactions over 1 million US dollars. Now, not every retail uh, trader out there, of course, uh, has a million plus uh, dollar in, in Bitcoin under in his pocket that he or she is trading. But it means that it reflects the share of growing institutional interest and capital being transferred across the Bitcoin network. So this is... Uh, a proof, according to them, and I, I have to say I pretty much agree with this, that we see institutional demand out there because the uh, the number of larger transactions north of 1 million has risen from 30% to over 65%. So whenever somebody is telling you there is no institutional demand, it's all, uh, it's all a hoax brought to you by Bitcoin maximalists that are too, too, too eager to see Bitcoin rising because they are so engaged and up to the head filled with a long Bitcoin position. You can show them graphs like this. And by the way, they publish this, uh, I think, every week. Um, so this is from the on-chain, uh, the, the week on-chain it's called. So they, they, uh, they take a look at what is going on on the chain, what is the spending behavior on the chain at the moment for Bitcoin. They also always look at Ethereum, by the way. So if you're trading Ethereum, if you're Ethereum hotler, maybe um, might be quite interesting for you as well. And they are quite on the point most of the time when it comes to projecting like the state of the market, state of the market, I really mean here, like what is the behavior at the moment of the more retail traders, of the more short-term traders in comparison to the long-term traders. From this, you can uh, you can um, take knowledge that you then can apply to your own trading, of course, as well. So, yeah, what is up next for Bitcoin? Uh, in my opinion, Super important, I think I'm, I'm stating the obvious here probably, is that we are going to today, uh, not tomorrow, so really today is the important day that we are going to defend this uh, this area around 45,000. So we need to close again above 45,000, above the 200 days moving average. Because like I said last week already, and um, I, I think I remember we also were talking on Twitter about this, and again, if you're not following us on Twitter already, uh, do so. And you can find us there under at px underscore academy. Uh, so we tweet nearly every day uh, about interesting findings uh, on primarily Bitcoin and Ethereum at the moment. In the future, for sure, also on other cryptocurrencies. So uh, we need to defend this today so uh, my 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 personal approach here in terms of trading is should i see today that we uh, that we go lower and, and try to attack this forty five thousand? this for me personally please 
this is not financial advice. For me, this would be the area where I would look for long positioning, uh, probably. Should we close below that? Again, we can expect that we see a drawback uh, first into the areas for 42,000, potentially also a little bit under 40,000 again, which, I mean, it would be healthy because um, we've seen the sentiment and uh, let me look this up quickly again, the sentiment, the fear and greed. Here we go. We've, we've come with a sentiment uh, here 20, uh, to 71 now, so we are in error of green. But the way it changed yeah, is really within one and a half, two weeks, we went from extreme fear to, ex, uh, to greed. Potentially, even today, let's see uh, how this plays out or tomorrow we are going to be in the area of extreme greed. This cannot be healthy. Yeah? So markets tend to overheat. Of course, Bitcoin tends to surprise as well. But uh, stay a little bit cautious. Like uh, as long as we defend this 200 days moving average, things are going to be just fine. Uh, we're probably going to see rather quick moves up to 50,000 then in my opinion. Uh, but we eventually will also reach uh, an area where at least we are going sideways. It doesn't necessarily mean we, ha we have to go down all the way again uh, and bounce back. Uh, can also be an area of, of sideways, more boring development, if you want. So, so something similar to what we saw uh, down here when we oscillated uh, in this area before we broke out to the top. Um, so yeah, pretty, pretty simple to play that at the moment, in my opinion, but of course we have to see how it plays out. If you have a question for us, you can always ask a question, obviously, if you're watching live here on Twitch or YouTube in the chat. And, uh, if you also want, you can get in touch with us under academy at primexpt.com. We are always answering every single email that reaches us. So if there's something also you, where you say like, Hey, I would like to see that covered in your show uh, in the future, don't be shy, ask it. And if enough people ask, are asking us the, the same question, we are obviously going to answer this question live here on that crypto show. Don't also forget to claim your 50% deposit bonus if you go to, and let me quickly show that to you. Oh yeah, you cannot see this. Wait, I need to drag this here. Here we go. If you go to marching account, and type in here the promo code Trading Academy, all in capital letters. Uh, you'll get a 50% tradable deposit bonus from PrimeXPD.com. And everything you win with this bonus, by the way, you can keep for yourself and you can withdraw. So it's basically free margin. And I think this is a very, very good offer. So why not seize the opportunity? And if you are not already, start trading. Good. This is all for today. So always remember to keep safe out there. Always use a stop loss. If possible, use a take profit as well. And I will see you again tomorrow at 10 a.m. CET. Take care and goodbye.